Hi guys, Chris back here with Mini PCs. Now it's been a while since I've looked at some in the channel and right now I've got with me, this is the Intel Nuke, the new basic entry level model from them that is now powered by the Gemini Lake, which is the successor to the Apollo Lake. And that's pretty much the reason why I decided to get this so I can have my first hands on with the new chipset. So there's a few changes with the Gemini Lake over the Apollo Lake. It now supports double data rate for up to 2400 megahertz, which is good. That's a big increase over double data rate, 31600 megahertz. It's got one megabyte more of cache on the CPU. So instead of the three megabytes cache, it now has four. And we also have support for up to 60 hertz 4K, which is great because the Apollo Lake that was capped at 30 hertz, which was rather laggy if you tried to use that with a 4K monitor in a PC desktop mode there. It just wasn't a great experience. And so now it's going to be nice and smooth there with that high refresh rate. So this little PC you can see, very tiny. It does come with a Visa mount, so you could mount it onto the back of a monitor or a TV if you wanted to. And if we have a look at the ports on the back of it, first we'll start out with. So we've got two USB 3 ports here. We have optical out, which is great to see. We don't often have an optical audio port on mini PCs and something if you wanted to set this up as a media P PC it's it's really good to have that option there it also is a, a 3.5 millimeter jack as well for your audio out there too and we've got a vent here you can see at the top so this is where all the heat's going to be coming out it's only a 10 watt processor but it still is actively cooled now to comment on the fans now at the start of the video that they are very low the speed that they are run at and you hardly really hear them it's just a slight little hum and it almost is pretty much off uh, when it's an idle so you can hardly hear them so it's not going to bother anyone it's a very quiet pc this one here i personally don't like fan noise at all it really does bother me and it's one of the reasons why i would use a mini pc instead of a desktop pc for light tasks at least so we've got two hdmi ports on here so you can run two monitors at 4k 60 hertz and we also have here you can see uh, the gigabit lan port too so if you want to connect that up to lan then you've got at least a high speed port on that so on the right hand side here too, we've got a, another vent, this is an intake vent, and we have a Kensington lock slot and also a SD card slot there you can see. Along the front, those two little dots there are dual array microphones, this is another big thumbs up here to have mics on this, and two of them, they're quite good quality as well, and that can be used with Windows Cortana for example. And you can see another two, three uh, USB 3 ports on there. Now that one that's orange, that's a powered port. So if it's in sleep or standby, you can charge devices with it. It also has an IR receiver in the front along here. So you can use an optional remote for it to use it as a media PC. And we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with microphone support. So overall, the build and design of this little mini PC is very good, it's very solid. The outside frame, that is made out of plastic. The top is plastic as well, and we'll have the antennas in there for the wireless AC. Overall, nice little size, good build quality. I really do like it. Now there's a couple of components that you do need for this. So you're gonna need a hard drive, and you're also gonna need some RAM and an operating system to install. Okay, let's get this unboxed. So there's the mini PC. You can see it is really quite small, very small in fact. So that's one bonus thing about these Intel Nukes is that they're tiny, so you can actually put this on the back of a monitor or something. I don't know where that has a Visa bracket inside here. I think it should actually. We've got some uh, instruction manuals here just telling you how to get the back off it, install your SSD and your RAM. Uh, also the Intel Sauron sticker. I don't know if you want to put that on the front of it or not. At least they give us that option. Okay, here is the Visa mount for it. So you just need to screw this on and you can have this mounted to the back of a TV or a monitor if you're gonna use it as a media PC. And in here is the power adapter. So that's the UK plug. I had to import this one in because in Spain, they're not actually selling it at the moment. It's due to come probably at the end of the month or so. Uh, some screws here as well. This is for the mounting, that Visa bracket. And our power supply. So this is rated to 19 volts. Just to point out too that the plug is one of those funny looking Mickey Mouse ones. So these are very easy to source and find, for example, for me, a European plug with the same connector. So you just need to screw up these four screws here. You can't actually pull them right out. They're designed to stay in there. So that's a good design move there from Intel. This simply just lifts up and out, just like so. Now you see here we have the tray there for our SATA 3 drive. So that's 2.5 inches, of course, and the RAM has to go in here. I'll install that now. So you can see there's not a lot of room in here. And actually looking, I don't know if they'd be able to fit 
an M SATA SSD slot or an M.2 SSD slot in here. Well, we have to probably go somewhere around here unless they could move the SATA 3 port somewhere around there or would have to lose the SD card reader perhaps for that. So the RAM is just like your laptop RAM, it just clips in. Now I'm taking a bit of a risk here because I've got eight gigabyte RAM, uh, two lots of it. I'm gonna see if it's gonna actually be able to take 16 gigabytes of RAM. So eight in one slot, eight in the other. And my SSD has just simply slotted here in place. There's no screws or anything. It's held in there with this bracket. So it's time now to install the operating system. I'll do that off camera. And you're also going to need an HDMI cable, of course. That is not included in the box. So no review would be complete without having a look at the BIOS. So it's using Intel's Visual BIOS. And there's a lot of settings we can tweak and change in here. Now I'll just show you the interesting things here. So cooling, we can adjust the fans. So if you're not happy with it, then I mean these fans are very quiet. If you decide that even on the balance mode, I don't like it, then you can put it into the quiet mode. Of course, that will increase your fan noise. And if we move over to power as well, there's a couple of interesting settings here. So you can tweak up the package power time window. Unfortunately, we cannot completely unlock the power limits. We're going to need some sort of memory hack in order to do this, like we've done with the Apollo Lake. So you can completely remove those limits there and let it just use as much power as it wants, boosting mostly the GPU performance. You've got boot menu here as well, and really everything else you'd expect from a BIOS, which is quite good. But we can, of course, adjust that power limit or disable it. It would be really nice if Intel would let us do that, but I guess they want to lock down the chipset. So before I get onto the general performance, I just wanted to point out a few things with the chipset. So it's running a Sauron J4005. It's dual core, dual thread. And the graphics is integrated. So this is Intel's UHD Graphics 600, basically the same exact GPU as the Apollo X GPU. However, because the RAM's faster, we've got double data rate for 2400 megahertz, that should boost the performance of it. And right here you can see maximum turbo of this chipset. This is one of the improvements of the new Gemini Lake is the higher clocks. So this goes up to 2.7 gigahertz maximum turbo there boost that it can get up to. Now, if I have a look at the CPU information right over here, you can see that there is an unlimited power limit max, but the power limit one is 12 watts. Hopefully we can override this for increased performance. It will probably help the GPU clock up and boost and turbo higher as well, but that is currently set. We cannot change that or increase it. The time I've extended to 128 seconds. Now moving over to Microsoft's Edge here, we'll have a look at the performance of a couple of synthetic benchmarks I ran. So this first one here is a Geekbench 4's CPU test. And the single core score here, 2018. Now that's an improvement over the Apollo Lake. Uh, quite a decent improvement there. It's up around about 500, 600 points over the previous generation. But the multi-core score here, not so great. So it's only because it's a dual core really. If this was a quad core, I expect somewhere around 5,500, something like that. And so go for that Pentium J5500 version if you want better performance and quad core, of course. Here is the OpenCL score, so not a wonderful score here. It's a very weak GPU, so 8,156 is a slight increase over the Apollo Lakes. Now we have a look at edge performance with scrolling, very smooth, and it does run really good. So clicking on anything, it's pretty much very quick to load up the pages and no issues there. So we have a look at now Chrome performance. So scrolling in Chrome is not quite as fast, but it's still ideal, it's fine. I feel that most people will be happy with this. So now let's have a look at 4K performance streaming via YouTube here. So I've got it running in 4K. It's just one of my reviews right here. This is the um, Xiaomi Redmi Note 5. And we'll enable the stats, of course. We need those. So you can see it's dropping a few frames here. But overall, reasonably smooth, just not as good as Edge still. So if you do this in Edge, you won't see so many drop frames. The performance is a little bit better. So we'll get out of that. And a lot of people have asked me in my previous mini PC tests is to check out spreadsheet performance. So I've got one here loaded in and I find that spreadsheet's gonna be fine. Uh, but I do have an SSD, so the SSD is definitely going to improve the performance when it comes to searches of really large Excel spreadsheets and things like that. 
So if you're using a hard drive, expect slower performance, but I found this to be fine. So for basic tasks like this, basic spreadsheets, I'm using OpenOffice at the moment because it's free, then it's gonna work fine. And same goes for doc editing, editing. So this is a document right here that I'm editing. Fine, the performance. I mean, it's not nothing stellar. It's not super quick. You do see a little bit of lag and starter with some images and other things, but overall, not bad performance. And I think most people will be happy with that right there. I'm also gonna try streaming Sorry, not streaming, but running a quite a demanding file here. So this is an HEV codec, 10 bit, uh, and the bit rate is 180. So let's get this open. See how long it takes to open up. A few seconds, a little bit of stutter in the beginning, but once it's over that, you can see now very smooth for this kind of bit rate, 4K. It's impressive. Now, a lot of people do ask things like HD audio pass over. Does it have it? Yes. Does it support HDR? No. So if you want to run HDR files on your HDR TV, uh, it's not going to work. I mean, I connected up to my LG TV and no, you, you can't get the HDR on here, unfortunately. I think because this is a basic model, that's why Intel have that disabled there, which is not great. So Photoshop, yes, you can do minor edits. Now, if you're going to have a lot of layers, you're going to be adding um, lots and lots of different images and filters and tweaks and things. Expect slowdown. You need a lot of patience when applying different filters. But overall, it's not too bad, the performance you can get out of this. And lastly, Cody, go into this as well. We'll check out performance of that same file. Let's play that one again. So a little bit of starter just there in the beginning, but this is actually playing it quicker and a lot better than just running that off Windows. Windows, the player that I have in there. Now this is actually running from that SD card slot. So not bad, not bad performance. So as a media player, this is gonna be perfect, this system I feel for people. Adequate power and performance for that. And your basic light PC tasks there, nothing too demanding. So I'm doing an extreme multitasking test here at the moment. I've got an installation of Fortnite going on in the background. I'm trying to own, install OpenOffice at the same time. I've got Photoshop trying to be installed. Chrome's open with a few tabs. I'm pushing this well beyond its limits. It's only a dual core CPU and you can see the whole time CPU is maxed out at 100%. And it's not actually holding out too bad. I mean, it's doing all right. If, if we swap over tabs here in Chrome, you can see there's quite a delay there. That's pretty slow. Scrolling down, that is a little choppy there. And I'll just go back to techtablets.com. Actually, that scrolling speed's all right, considering that I'm really asking far too much, way too much of this tiny little dual core CPU. Now onto the fun part of the review. Let's have a look at gaming performance. So I did try to run uh, Fortnite, and no, it just will not load. Epic Games Launcher just quits. It quits when it realizes that it's got a super weak GPU with integrated graphics, and no, Epic Games does not want you to have five frames per second trying to play this. So what I'm gonna do is, is run some lighter titles. So this is one here from the Windows Play Store, Dungeon Hunter 5. So you can see light titles like this, that it's handling fine. I mean, even the Apollo Lake can play this game perfectly fine with playable frame rates. Next up is a game benchmark. So this is Resident Evil 5. I'm going to run it with these settings here. So 720p should be playable, at least with the Gemini Lake here. So there we go, the result is 27.5 frames per second average, meaning that this game is gonna be playable. It's an older title, so not too bad. This is an increase of about four frames per second average over the Apollo Lake N3450. So this is 720p Counter-Strike Global Offensive on the lowest settings. And this is actually doing a little bit better than the Apollo Lakes. If you want an improved frame rate then of course lower the resolution down to something like 800 times 600 and yes I'm really bad at this game I just can't aim at all so there are quite a few stutters as you can see but overall this is a step up from the Apollo Lake which is great to see probably aided by the fact that the RAM is just quite a bit faster really aiding that GPU And finally, testing out League of Legends here. So this is 1080p on the medium to high setting, and we're hovering around 50 frames per second, sometimes up to 60 with peaks 
up in the 70s even. So this is not bad at all. This is an improvement over the Apollo Lake M3450, about a 20% improvement. So it's not a lot. Expect better performance, of course, out of the Pentium Gemini Lake, which is that quad-core version, the J5005. So what about the thermals? This is really important. Is it overheating? No. I haven't seen it go over 75 degrees Celsius at the moment. You can see the maximum was 73. This is only 25 minutes of gaming, but I have run it for hours on end. And yeah, 75 is the maximum. Now, to comment on the fan noise, it's not bad at all. Like When it's been playing the game at the moment, you can hear it. It's a slight little hum, but it's not an irritating fan noise at all. It's very uh, docile. It doesn't have a high-pitched whine or anything, so it's not going to bother most people, and especially if you're running this in a TV cabinet or behind a TV, you are not even going to hear this fan at all. On idle, it's barely audible. You have to put your ear up to it to actually hear that the fan is working. So good thermals, good fan noise as well. Pretty, pretty much overall pleased with the thermal performance. And quickly taking a look at Linux support. So I'm running here Linux Manjaro, no issues. Everything is running. The performance is perfectly fine. The ports are working, Bluetooth, wireless, you name it. Everything seems to be just fine here. All right, so overall, who is this little mini PC for? Well, if you've watched through the video, clearly it's not for people that want and demand the best performance because it's going to let you down. It's not a powerhouse of a mini PC. This is good for light tasks, so browsing, video playback, a media PC, light tasks really is it all I would task this thing with. You don't want to be editing videos on this and you don't definitely want to be trying to game much on this. Light, older titles, okay, yeah, you can play a few games on as you saw from my examples there, so that is fine. So what I do like about this PC, obviously the form factor, very nice and small. We've got some options on here with plenty of USB ports. Two HDMI up to 4K 60Hz ports on there are really good. The HDMI 2 spec, so you can run two monitors. Uh, but that will probably be a little bit slower depending on what you're doing. So if you're going to do a lot of heavy multitasking again, it's going to really be taxed with that. So you're probably better off to go for the quad-core version, which is hopefully going to be out in about a month's time. I may be checking that one out. That's the Pentium Silver, the Gemini Lake, and I think it's the J5005. And uh, yeah, that has a turbo of 2.8 gigahertz. It's so slightly faster, but the main difference is it's got four cores. Uh, with four threads instead of just the two cores and two threads that this one has. It's kind of limiting the performance there. So thermals are good. Fan noise is really good. It's very low. You basically don't even hear it at all. There wasn't really a, me, a point of me giving you a sample. In fact, I recorded a sample, but you could hardly even hear the fan. So I, I cut that out of the edit in the end there. So overall, I can recommend it for light tasks, but for heavy use, no. Go for something like a Core i5. Uh, 8250U mini PC. I will actually be reviewing one of those ones from AliExpress soon in the channel, so I hope to see you back then. Thanks a lot for watching this review. If you liked it, please give a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.